Okay, so be to begin with watercolor, you're going to need some materials. You're going to need a color palette. And you can see this one has quite a few colors. Some come with less, um, some come with more, but you just basically need a clean color palette. And then you're on with the color palette comes a lid. And these lids are actually where you can mix the colors. So because this one is a big color palette, it also has a lot of these little holes for the... Um, to mix colors in because with watercolor you want to mix on the lid and not on the palette because if you mix two colors especially these light ones on the inside the color itself you're going to change that color and you could ruin it so a lot of the times you'll see in color palettes like the white or the yellow looks really gross and gunky so you want to do that all on the lid then you're going to need brushes and for watercolor you want to look for soft brushes so you don't want to find like the smaller detail brushes those might be firm which is totally fine but you want to look for softer brushes for watercolor brushes like this they're bigger you can absolutely use them but they're really not intended for watercolor they're more for acrylic and oil so you want to look for smaller kind of softer brushes when it comes to watercolor in addition, you're going to need a cup of water, and you can see mine's not filled all the way. Um, it's kind of dirty water still because I was using it earlier, but you want a cup of water not filled all the way because um, you need to use that constantly, but don't fill it up, and also don't leave your brushes in the water. So if you're not using a, the brushes, put them aside, put them on the table, on a paper towel. Don't keep them in the cup of water or they'll absorb that water. So paper towels are crucial, and I recommend having a few because you're going to use them, one, like I said, to brush, wash, um, to, to brush your, the water off on your, from your brushes, to test colors out. Um, you can also create actually really cool effects with them. Like if you kind of blot down the paper towel on the paint, you can create really interesting effects. So really, it's really, really important to have the paper towels. It's a, it's a tool that many people forget when they're using watercolor. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some techniques, some of the more basic techniques when it comes to painting with watercolor. And so this first one is called wet on wet and it starts by just taking a clean brush, dipping it in water, and you're going to apply that water onto the piece of paper. And now you don't want to apply too much because too much water on the paper can make it warp and change. But you basically just want to apply some water on the paper. And this is just clear water, nothing else. And then you're going to take your brush, dip it again back in some water, kind of um, take off any excess on the side of the cup, dip it in some paint, and you'll kind of blop down different colors and you can see that they're starting to spread and so that color spreading that's kind of creating that really cool effect so this is an effect that sometimes you I mean we're just painting something random but you can use this effect for painting skies um, really cool backgrounds uh, water scenes I'm just kind of using these pinks and purples but you can see as I'm adding all these different colors they're starting to like spread and mix together And now I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to kind of swerve some of these colors in together. You can obviously just leave the colors like this if you like that effect as individual dots. But I also just want to show you some other effects you can do by just taking a brush and kind of swerving the colors into one together. It, it works better if there, there's not a dominating dark color. So like I added that purple at the end, so it's kind of dominating all the other colors. But you can do that and then go back, add some more. But it creates a nice kind of soft, very typical watercolor effect. And so then see I'm going back more with water, more paint. And if that, you don't like that, you can always take a paper towel kind of place it on top of the thing and it'll take off a lot of that extra paint and water if you don't like it and then you kind of basically just start over and add more too so with watercolor if you ever panic and you added too much that's why that paper towel is really really important and so you can see now that it's gotten more wet how those colors are all kind of blending in together So for this next technique, it's wet on dry. So I'm going to actually use a smaller brush, but here I'm not starting with, I'm starting with a dry piece of paper and I'm just going to dip my brush into some water, then into the color, and then I will just paint directly onto the paper. And 
And you can see if it's not enough paint, then you, that means you just probably didn't grab enough water. And you kind of go back over that. I'm just kind of drawing a basic triangle. So for this last technique, I'm going to show you it's Impressionism. So Impressionism is a style of painting that originated, it's originated in France and in Europe, but it's a way of painting that's typically actually done with acrylic or oil. But what's nice about this one is that there's going to be no blending. So for those two techniques, wet on wet and wet on dry, I blended the colors together. For this one, you're not going to do any blending. You're just going to push, place the colors directly onto the paper and just leave them there. And this is a really nice technique, again, for like things like trees, bushes, um, places where you want to show some texture. And now I'm going to show you different ways that you can take these three techniques and add them to an actual painting.